episode contains mature language and situations. Listener discretion is advised. You wake to the sound of a train. The clack, clack, clack of wheels. In the distance, is that the sound of birds in a forest? No. It's angels in a choir. Or is it demons from hell? It doesn't matter. You have no memory of how you got here. All you know is that you're lost and that now you belong to the Grey Rooms. This is it, roomies, the end of the season. There is change coming to the House of Heretics, and there's no stopping the Silver Express as it moves down the line. Join us one final time before our season break as we bring you stories straight from hell. From everyone at the Grey Rooms production team, we hope you enjoy listening to the finale as much as we enjoyed creating it. And we'd like to remind everyone that the Grey Rooms Productions has expanded its reach we now have access to Control Operator Jeff and the Ghost Signal Podcast. True tales about hauntings, sightings, the paranormal, and exorcisms from beyond the grave. Search for the Ghost Signal on Spreaker or your favorite podcatcher. And visit Jeff and the Ghost Signal at theghostsignalpodcast.com. So without further ado, please enjoy episode 20. in the realm of mortals is war in comparison to the chaos unfolding before me. At least that was what someone or something wanted us to think. Typically it's hard to think clearly in the heat of battle. I cared nothing for the losses here. Hell must always create more. Archers! This strange man, this elder, seemed as comfortable in the front line as he did working from the shadows. The power the world could bring to bear was staggering, but I could tell it wouldn't be enough to turn the battle. In the right mind, at least 
is a weapon with no means of control. Belial, we have to fall back. We cannot reach its defenses. This creature is of the far. Shift the legions to either side and target the darkened spots. Stay clear of the middle. My commands were relayed down the line. I felt a hum in the air as Belial, Duke of the Sixth Layer of Hell, Lord of the Heretics, unleashed his full might. giant creature from the sea took notice of the display of raw power and roared a challenge in response. A thousand miniature versions of the beast fell upon the shore and charged headlong into the front lines. The left flank disappeared under a writhing mass of gray howling flesh. Our allies of the grove were being consumed alive. And watched helplessly as John's shield collapsed leaving the right flank exposed to tentacles from the water, dragging everyone to a watery grave. Fall back! Regroup! Fall back! Survival became the highest priority. There would be no winners here. great weight lifted from the core of my being. I stood in the forest clearing, breathless and shaking. I took a knee before my face could meet the ground. I stared at the bodies of my vanquished foes as strange emotions flooded my body. I gathered my remaining strength and stood. The battle still raged on near the lake. Samantha entrusted me with helping save the refuge that these... these defiant ones created. I liberated a broken blade from a previous opponent and readied myself for the figure walking towards me from the tree line. <laughs> Hello, Bob. Did you miss me? <laughs> the Warden. 
he pulled a mutilated broken body behind him and carried another over his shoulder. His cloak of keys was soaked in blood. How did he follow me here? I've solved two of my three problems for today. My blades and chains are eager to taste your blood. <laughs> Samantha. Todd, I wasn't used to emotions. <laughs> my hands began to shake as tears welled in my eyes. I've never felt sadness and rage mixed together. The spike of adrenaline cleared away any feelings of fatigue. Todd was well and gone, but Samantha's wound is still oozed with fresh blood. She wouldn't last long without help. <laughs> Come and play with me, Bob. I love it when they struggle. <laughs> ah! Let's go, Bob. Yes! Yes! Oh, I love that! Oh, no! No! Is that all you have? <laughs> Are you crying, Bob? It was evident that the warden was toying with me. His mocking laughter doing just as much damage as his wicked blade. My anger and rage turned into frustration. This flesh wasn't strong enough. My first act in this new mortal frame was... failure. Toodles, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now I'm bored. Goodbye, Bob. The warden struck quicker than my eye or reflexes could follow. He only needed one hand to maneuver the blade that impaled me. He pulled me uncomfortably close and lowered the cowl on his cloak with his free hand. Wisps of long, stringy gray hair blew around his face. His features might be considered beautiful in another time, but scars were cut deep into the surface, adding to his mask of rage. I expected the blackened eyes of a demon, but saw a sliver of red and white around fully dilated pupils. I locked eyes with the being I shared so many centuries within the walls of the Grey Rooms and felt sadness. <laughs> I forgive you, brother. I don't need your forgiveness, Bob. The moment hung suspended in time until I heard a familiar voice below us. I saw a delicate hand grasping the warden's ankle. Leave him alone, you bastard! <laughs> the warden dropped me, and we both collapsed to the ground. I lay there trying to draw breath. I felt the edges of my vision turning black. I managed to reach out and grab the hand of my friend, Samantha Winters. She smiled back at me. This felt like a fitting end to our story. I closed my eyes and waited for the end. But the end never came. The blackness retreated as I saw several robed figures standing around me. Their faces were obscured by hoods, stained a deep crimson. I tried to call out, 
but couldn't find my voice. I was levitated by an unseen force and moved through the forest. Everything blurred around me, and I lost consciousness again. I awoke on the floor of a cave. Heavy chains were around my wrist. The pain in my chest was gone, along with my shirt. Only a large scar reminded me of my previous waking encounter. I could see Samantha chained and still unconscious across from me. The rise and fall of her chest told me she was alive, but little else. The warden sat next to me with his back to the wall, a fixed snarl on his face. His cloak was gone. I followed his gaze and saw the source of his ire. A thin, gaunt man sat on a throne of bone. A grimoire in one of his hands glowed with its own eerie incandescence. I pulled myself upright, rested my back against the wall, and wondered, what now? I used to be on the front lines when the Grove took a more forward approach to their problems. Incoming! Ship left! Now, I remember why I left this ship behind. Too many close calls, too much chaos. The reward for this misadventure? A literal lake of untouched essence left over from creation. Essentially, the reserve power of Lucifer himself. I knew a fucked situation when I saw one, though. He did not bring enough to capture this place. We needed a bigger stick. The only thing keeping us in the fight was Beckett's adjustments and a handful of holy Avengers from the mount. The rest were just cannon fodder. Chaff scattered to the wind. I'm here, cousin. Where the fuck were you? Things went sideways fast and you are coming go to places you... I don't know if you remember, but contractual obligations need to be fulfilled with the rooms. Figured you fairy princesses would know all about that. And that was my signal to go. Belial managed to slay the creature, but that just created a new horde that spilled from the corpse. A dark mist surrounded the Duke and shrank him back to regular size. Beckett pushed forward, carving a bloody path of destruction along with his personal bodyguards to reach his master. Note to self, do not fuck with that guy one-on-one. -on -one much less surrounded by an entourage. The Admiral reached Belial quickly, but the Horde descended with renewed fury. His companions started falling one by one underneath a pile of bodies. Caliban, take angry horns and rescue a boss. A favor from a Duke of Hell may be useful in future negotiations. Moth, Belial has hurt. We need to get him back to his tower. One thing at a time. You sure we can salvage this somehow, Admiral? No, we need to regroup. We don't have. 
have enough in reserve. Look there. The warriors from the mount have already withdrawn. Fucking cowards. The Admiral was right. I didn't want him to be, but I couldn't deny what my eyes saw. The residents of this space joined the battle, putting our group between a hot place and thoroughly fucked. I signaled the full retreat of the Grove's forces and led the way back to our exodus. Beckett left a trail of bodies against a seemingly endless horde in our wake. He looked more demon than man. push himself before changing completely. There is no escape if you let hell sink its hooks in deep enough. Welcome back, Admiral. Architect. I hope you have good news. But looking the way you do, I'd choose my words carefully. You better have a good reason to have both my attendants with you instead of your rabble. We were not successful. Belial was injured. <laughs> Surely you must be joking. Belial cannot be... be injured. He's pretty fucking... I don't remember asking you to talk. I'll get to you in a moment. An unexpected enemy arrived on the battlefield. A giant creature from the far and its horde. Belial rose to meet it but fell in battle after its destruction. Is he still alive? I believe so. But I don't know for how long. The Duke's contingent secured him in the tower and sealed it with a powerful warding spell. Nothing is getting in or out. What were our losses? Everyone. That also includes my personal guard. I only escaped with the help of these two and our allies from the Grove. Moth saved us. You should have stayed and died with them. I'm sure he'll be back asking for... Christ, can you tell me why both my attendants are here? There was a small problem on the train. Do tell. Azrael was freed. The one thing I told you not to do. <clears throat> it was unavoidable. One of the guests regained their memories. He somehow also freed the others of their mind wipes. Where are the guests now? Uh, we don't know. I'll allow you to explain your failure before I kill you. I... I... I mean, uh... You see... Two guests entered the door at the same time. T 
two? Where's the third? Killed when the angel was freed. The other two escaped to a platform in the aftermath and both entered a door at the same time. Both of you return to the rooms. I'm sending Alma to meet you. We're going to put the memory blocks back in place. There will be no stopping on the Silver Express this time. No more mistakes. Hello, dear sister. Sorry to catch you in the middle of whatever this is, but I just spoke to a mutual friend of ours. Bez, I do not have time for this right now. Just wait with- Azrael sends his regards. There are multiple legions of demons spawn at our gates. It appears that we are under siege from another lair. Cries, Caliban, return to the rooms and wait for Alma. Admiral, with me. Bez, you may go. I'm busy. decided to show up. Stay down. Easy. They're not going to be any trouble. What do you want? You just need to wait for our special guest to arrive. You've been given a second chance. A chance to do what? You did okay on your first go around, but we need you to do better. No distractions this time. Where's Finley? Funny you should ask. There's pieces of him flash burned into the ground right over there. You play with angels, you get burned. I I can't think straight. It feels like my mind is on fire. You both entered the door at the same time. Your minds are melding together. You have fragments of each other's memories. It won't matter soon, anyway. You you can't keep us here. We'll find a way out. That's where you're wrong. I can keep you here. (laughs) I will stop you from leaving. Every single time. We will get out. I don't think so. I'm afraid that you won't remember much of anything after this reset. Cries. Bring them over to the ritual circles so Alma can do her work. Oh, what sights we have to show you once you wake up. Change in the House of Heretics. 
written by Arthur Unk, with performances by Danielle Ellett as Amani, Jeff Clements as Zook, Brandon Green as Caliban, Tanya Milojevic as Cries, Mark Witten as Moth, Margaret Ashley as The Architect, LaQuinn Groves as Beckett, Graham Rowett as Bob, Sarah Ruth Thomas as Samantha, Jason Wilson as The Warden, Joe Stofko as Belial, and Krista Lewis as Beziel. Musical composition was by J.M. Scherf. Episode artwork, web development, and creative direction by Cassie Pertit. Social media and Patreon management is by Brooks Bigley. Videography is by Hale Scherf. Community management is by Tori Miller. Audio engineering and sound design was by me, Jason Wilson. Oh, what sights we have to show you. Sounds familiar. I'm sure nothing bad will happen after those kind words. And just when you thought you were out, we pulled you back in. The epic conclusion of Season 4 is only the beginning for Season 5. So sit tight, strap in, and get ready for a roller coaster of a ride as the Silver Express continues the second half of its journey through hell. We would like to take the time to thank our patrons and to any of those who have taken the time to leave us a five-star rating or a review. Those reviews keep us at the top of the charts and makes it easier for more twisted souls to find the show. Patrons like Alicia Journey, Bepsy Man, Ellen Houghton, Eric Pritchard, Eric Phones, Jackal Bot Snows, Lynn Browning, Matthew Smith Deal, Patrick Stewart, Ronan Kumori, Sean Gary, Kale Shade, Doozer Pendon, Emily Spiegel, and Michael Furness. You can find The Grey Rooms on Spotify, iTunes, or your favorite podcatcher. But we're also now available on iHeartRadio's Spreaker app. Download the iHeart Spreaker app today or open the browser and just search The Grey Rooms. And we here at The Grey Rooms love our fans and want to give back to you in the best way that we know how. We have a lot of fun things to show you and uh, we hope that you like them. And you can find out more by joining us on social media. You can find us on Instagram, YouTube, Reddit, Twitter, and Facebook. And we took your advice and extended an olive branch to all of the tortured souls who have passed through the rooms. Our emotional support group is always looking to help you with all of your, uh, your needs. And don't forget about our merch store. It's full of epic designs and logos for you to sport, showing the world that you are a survivor of these very rooms. All of this can be found in the show notes or on our website at thegrayrooms.com. And also be sure to check out The Ghost Signal if you want to hear real-life tales of terror. Visit our friend, Control Operator Jeff, at theghostsignalpodcast.com. And have you checked out our Discord server? If you only listen to the podcast and you're only getting half the experience, join for free to hang out with Grey Room's cast and crew, watch movies, listen to music, play games, or learn to write your very own horror story. Our community grows daily, and you can meet and interact with like-minded fans from all over the world. And the executive bathroom still has a few more private stalls left. So reserve your heated seat today. Mm -mm -mm. Thank you ever so much for riding along with us in this up, down, left, right season we just had. What a ride. A pure adventure. And do us a favor. Spread the word. Get on Twitter, Facebook, any platform that you are on. And tell people about the Grey Rooms. Help us grow this show. We appreciate each and every one of you, and the growth that we have had wouldn't be possible without you. So thank you personally from all of us here at The Gray Rooms for your support, and we do anxiously look forward to meeting you again in Season 5. So till then, thank you, and we'll see you next season. This has been a Gray Rooms production. Copyright 2022. 20.